Let's sing together and joy to the world.
those in our church who may be shut in, not able to be here as much. So glad to see Miss Emily here today with Robin and uh, glad to glad to have everyone that can make it. We want to lift up the ones who can and pray for them. Um, remember Rita today, I think she was feeling a little bad this morning. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, continue to remember Darren. We're believing with him that God's uh, got a great path through what he's walking through and he's going to take him through it. We're believing and trusting him. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for Sister Helen and Sister Julie. We want to lift them up. But let's pray that we don't get caught up in the Christmas hustle and bustle. That we don't get too worried about did we get all the gifts we wanted to get? Or did we buy everything we needed to buy? Did we cook all our favorite dishes? You know, all that stuff's cool stuff. It's nice to have it. But he's the reason for the season. Amen. 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 So let's pray that the Lord will let this Christmas be a special Christmas. Let's, let's you know, just like little words of that Faith Hill song, you know, where are you Christmas? Where can I find you? Let's, let's find where he is because Amen. he's the meaning. Let's just look upon him and let's say, God, help us in everything we do this season find you at the heart of it because that's what matters more than all let's all pray together heavenly father we just come before you yes. god we thank you we glorify you we exalt you we lift up your name lord all the names that we can use for you because you are the name that's above all other names there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved but lord is your name and we lift it up and we exalt you and we glorify you. God, now we pray for that you just touch our hearts, oh God, that we would be able to enter into this Christmas season remembering you, Lord. Remembering the birth. Remembering the great sacrifice you gave, Heavenly Father. Lord, I know it's all beautiful for us. There's Christmas lights there and little children dressed up. Oh God, but when you were there, you were that lonely in that poor stable you were laying in that cattle feed, Lord. You were there going through this. God, let us remember what you did for us and your great gift to us. Heavenly Father, touch this church. God, we pray that you just strengthen us, Lord. God, unite us together as a body that we would be more stronger and united in you. Because, Lord, we realize we have no strength on our own. And God, when we're our strongest, it's when we're on our knees. So, Lord, help us to lean on you and be strong in you and in the power of your might, dear God. Heavenly Father, I pray for this church. I pray that you just give us direction. Lord, that you just use us for your glory. Heavenly Father, that you let your will be done in our lives. And God, we just praise you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord, for that privilege. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You know, it's been a rough year, but God's still in control. You know, sometimes he says his ways are not our ways. Sometimes we just don't understand what he does. And so I, I first of all, I want to thank God for what I was done for the church this year. But I also want to stand, thank these two guys that can stand in the right and left of me. And from, the, from myself and from the pastor. I just left the sure. service council. Thank you. <laughs> see, when you. See what you got to look forward to when you get over <laughs> God's got a sense of humor. Yeah. You can't never remember anything. But anyway, from the service council and from the church as a whole, we just want to say thank you to both of these gentlemen. Uh, Pastor Stephen and Richard. And Ronnie helped me out there. He color coordinated those for me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And I'm just excited about what God's got for all of us. And just look forward to next year. You know, this year we would have said, well, it was tough. Well, it was tough, but we made it through. You know, and we'll make it through the next because God's still on the throne. 
greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. So just as this Christmas season, just think about that. God's got it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I just want to let you know that, that I love each and every single one of you. From the bottom of my heart, you guys have been a blessing. Keep looking toward Jesus because how many of you know he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. And it's in him that all things are possible. And I believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. Yeah. Just want to say I love you guys. At this time, we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings. So if I can have two ushers to join me up front. That would be great. We want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving. I know there's some of you, you have attended this church for years, year after year. Some of you have been attending this church longer than I've been alive. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for your faithfulness and your giving. And as you give unto God, God is going to bless you. God is going to meet your needs. And so again, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness in your obedience and your giving. At this time, I'm going to pray and then we are going to receive. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for another day to live, to love, and to serve you. God, we thank you for another year to live, to love, and to serve you. God, we thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, we know that you are the reason for the season. And God, I pray that you would bless each person that gives unto you, God. Each person that gives and has given and will continue to give, God. I pray that you would Take the tithes and the offerings and use it for your kingdom and for your glory and bless each person that gives unto you. We know that you will bless because your word says that if we take the first 10% and bring it to the storehouse, that you're going to pour out a blessing. Yeah. And Lord, I thank you for your blessings, God. I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you are doing and what you're going to continue yeah. to do. And we love you and praise you. And all the people of the Lord said... Amen. Let's proceed. Are they getting the stage set? 
we're going to, in a few minutes, present to you a Christmas story. The very first Christmas, or the first Noel, as they say in French. <laughs> we're going to present to you from our children's church a sweet little bunch of kids. Very simple, but a powerful story. Amen. Very powerful story. <sighs> And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. And he went there to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child.
a special song for you with the bells. We're going to do Silent Night, or that truly was a holy night. Now, can we all give Jesus a big uh, hand clap of praise today? Come on. God is good. God is awesome. I just want to let you know that God is with you and he is on your side. If you are in Christ, if you are a believer, the good news is this Christmas that God is on your side and he is with you and he is for you. I want to preach a short message about three and a half hours. Um, so I hope you guys are ready. But the title of my message is All is Calm, All is Bright. And so let's, let's just pray. I just feel like we need to pray. 
Uh, real quickly before I dive into this message, Father, we love you. And we thank you so much for an incredible time already. God, we thank you for your constant yearly reminder of your love. We thank you, Lord, today that you came uh, to be flesh and you came and you dwelt among us. And you would go on, Jesus, and you would give your heart uh, and, and away so that we can have salvation, so that we can be healed, so that we can be made whole. Thank you, Jesus, that you went on to the cross so that we can have a fresh start and a fresh beginning. And Lord, today, I know there's some people, whether if they're watching online or if they're sitting in the pew, maybe uh, they're struggling today. Maybe they're suffering with depression. Maybe they're wrestling with their relationship issue. But God, I pray that you would touch them today and bring true hope and healing to their lives and that you would just fill their lives, their hearts, their minds and their soul with your peace today and lord we love you and praise you in jesus name amen so uh, let me go ahead and say this from the very start from the very get-go please stay around at the end of the service we're going to recognize our members and then after that we are going to have a christmas dinner listen don't go out and spend 20 30 40 bucks stay here where the food is free um we're gonna have some fried chicken come on how many of you know today come on i'm being for real how many of you know fried chicken is going to be in heaven with some good old sweet tea we got fried chicken we got a bunch of food back there it's good to see jamie she was here i know she scooted on back but it's good that she came back she's an awesome cook she has a gift to um cook and, and prepare the foods but i I want to go ahead and get on into this. How many of you love Christmas? I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of the year. I love everything about Christmas. I love the lights. I love the Christmas carols. I love the movies. I, the teachers and the students, they love Christmas break. Come on, where's my teachers? Where's my students? You love Christmas break this year. If you're in the Greenwood schools, we get three weeks off. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But make sure you spend some time with Jesus because how many of you know that Jesus is the reason for the season. But not only is he the reason for the season, he's the reason every single day, all the time, in every season, in the springtime, in the fall, in the winter, in the good times, in the bad times. Jesus is the reason for the season. And today, first and foremost, how many of you know we have came, we have come together to celebrate the goodness and the greatness of God. Come on, I love everything about Christmas. Let me ask you a couple of questions. How many of you lived in a home where you open up gifts all at the same time? You just, anybody raise your hand, show of hands. Now, how many of you do it the good old godly Christian way where you do one gift at a time and you kind of watch it as everybody's opening up their gifts? How many of you know that gifts are fun to give and gifts are also fun to watch other people open. But can I tell you today that there is no greater gift than the gift that Jesus Christ came to rescue us and to save us from our sins. He came to save us from ourselves. Can I hear a good, strong amen? Amen. amen. In John chapter one, verse five, it's going to be on the screen. John chapter 1 verse 5. The light. How many of you know that Jesus is the light? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And so I love the fact, hear me today, like if you don't get anything else out of what I say, please get this. Jesus Christ came and he stepped into the night. He stepped into the darkness. He stepped into a dark messed up, broken, and sinful world. And he didn't just bring us light, but how many of you know he is the light? John 3, 16. Come on. If, if you can quote any scripture, most of you can probably quote this scripture, but it says, for God so loved the world. How many of you know God loved the world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. This is the story of Christmas right here. That whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but will have eternal life. Come on, that's good news. That's the good news. That's the reason why we come today to celebrate Jesus. Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 2, I want to uh, highlight verse 10. This is the Christmas story, and I know a lot of you read the Christmas story uh, maybe on Christmas Eve or right before you open up 
the gifts. You read the Christmas story. How many of you read the Christmas story in your house? And it's found in Luke chapter 2. But I want to highlight verse 10. It says this, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. It's interesting. It's kind of funny because every time in scripture um, an angel shows up, an angel appears. The first thing that an angel says is do not be afraid. You know why? Because if you're sitting at your house in your recliner and an angel just appeared in your living room, you would be afraid. And let's be honest, you would need a diaper. Some of you would need to call an ambulance because you would have a heart attack. But the angel shows up and the angel says, do not be afraid. The angel shows up to the shepherds who were afraid. And, and the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that would cause or bring great joy. Come on, somebody say great joy. And this great joy, this good news is for all people. I love this. Jesus didn't come for one person or two people. Jesus didn't come for the future pastors or for the spiritual lead. Jesus didn't come for a few people or even many people, but Jesus came for all people. Amen. It's great news that will bring great joy for everybody. And I'm telling you. The good news is this, that Jesus came so that we can have relief. Relief from what? Relief from our sins. See, our sins is not something that we have to pay for anymore because Jesus Christ said, I want to come and I want to pay for your sins. Jesus Christ came so that you can have forgiveness. Jesus Christ came so that you can have hope and healing. Jesus Christ came so that you can have an abundant life here on earth and then one day you can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. Come on. Jesus Christ Christ came so that you don't have to be stuck, so that you don't have to be overwhelmed, so that you don't have to be confused or lost or frustrated, but Jesus Christ came and paid for your sins. Is there anybody grateful today that we have a God in heaven who sent his son Jesus Christ so that we no longer have to be hurt, lost, or confused? Jesus Christ, hear me today, he stepped into our darkness so that we can be healed. He stepped into our darkness so that we can be healed emotionally, physically, spiritually, and even mentally. Jesus Christ stepped in to the darkness and we can find forgiveness today. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the only one who brings clarity where there used to be confusion. Where you were once afraid how many of you know today you no longer have to be afraid because now you can become a child of God. I love what it says in the Bible. It says that God's perfect love cast out fear. So today, maybe you're fearful. Maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're scared. But I just want to let you know whether if you're sitting in the pew or if you're watching online that you don't have to be afraid. The Bible says in 2 Timothy verse one, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Today, this Christmas season, you can have peace in your mind. You can have peace in your heart. This is the greatest change. C.S. Lewis said this, that the son of God became a man so that men can become sons of God. So God gave us a gift. How many of you know what the gift is? It's Jesus. Jesus. And, and, in, we, and in return, we give him our lives. And we say, Lord, absolutely, you can have everything. Because of what you did, you gave everything for me. So in return, I'm going to give you my heart and my life. Come on. That's what light does. How many of you know light helps us to see? I think a lot of times we take lights for granted. We just kind of walk into the room and we just flip on the light, whether it be at home or work or in your office. We just walk in and we turn on the light. We have iPhones with lights. We have apps with the light. We have street lamps outside. We have headlights in cars. All of that is to help us navigate through the darkness of night so that we can see 
clearly so that we can get to where we need to go safely. And I just want to remind you and let you know that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ stepped into our darkness so that we can see him spiritually and we can have salvation full and free. Come on, would you give Jesus a hand clap of praise because of what he did for you and I? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about the nighttime that is scary. There's something about darkness that is scary. Um, there's some of you in here, <laughs> you're 50, 60 years old and you still sleep with a nightlight. It's okay. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. Clap on, clap off. <laughs> there's some of you, you really do need to sleep with a nightlight because when you wake up during the night to go use the bathroom and you turn the corner and you hit your knee on the bedpost, come on, how many of you have ever done that? Or you stump your toe, so maybe a nightlight's good. Um, you, you remember when you were younger and maybe you were outside and you were playing in the dark and, and you, you know, it's, it can be scary in the dark because you can't see and, and maybe you start to hear stuff and you don't know where it's coming from and your mind starts to play tricks and you're like, did you hear that? And your friend's like, no, I didn't hear anything. But again... I'm so grateful today that we have a God in heaven who yeah. sent his son, Jesus Christ, to step in, into the darkness. And Jesus was not afraid. I just want to let you know today, maybe you're like, man, my past is so bad. I can't believe I've done this and I've done that. Can I tell you today that Jesus is not afraid of your mess? He knew you before you were ever born. And he still went to the cross. He still loved you. He still went to the cross and died for the sin of the world. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. He went to the cross and he paid for your past, present, and future sins. Come on. Jesus is awesome today. Jesus was not intimidated. He was not scared. He was not afraid. Jesus Christ came and he didn't wait for us to fix ourselves. And he didn't wait for us to come out of the dark ourselves, but he came to be light so that we can see him. That's my next point. My next slide. Jesus wants you to see him. John chapter 14, verse six says, Jesus says this. This is red letter stuff. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man gets to the father except through me. Like that's not being arrogant. That's super helpful. That's super, super directional. Like there's no guessing. Jesus Christ came and he wants to make it clear. And he wants to clarify that he is the only way. He's the only way because I hear people say, oh, well, you know, Pastor Stephen, I think there's many ways to heaven. No, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. The Bible says I am the way. It doesn't say a way. Jesus Christ says I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man gets to the father itself through me. He wants you to see him today. And I feel like in my spirit today, there's some of you, maybe you're confused. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you're hurting. But I want you to know that God's presence is here. And God wants you to come into a relationship with yes. him. See, God's not mad at you, but God is madly in love with you. You are his child. You might be lost, but you are still his child. And he still loves you. Some of you, you got children. And they've backslid. But how many of you know you still love them no matter what because they're yours uh, that's your child and we are a child of God you might be a lost child but you are still a child of God and today if you have strayed I just want to let you know today that you can come back maybe you say Pastor Stephen I've taken like it seems like four billion steps away from God but how many of you know today it's only one step back to God and God loves you so much and he has a plan and a purpose for your life come on so not only can you see him, but after you begin to see him, you will now begin to see direction. And that's going to lead me to my next slide, my next point. God wants you to see direction. 
I love Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. These are great verses. These are my life verses. And I want to encourage you to write these two verses down and go back and look over these verses every single day. But it says to trust in the Lord. Come on. How many of you know today that we don't trust in man? We don't trust in our team. We don't trust in another thing. But we trust in the name of the Lord. The Bible says that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Come on. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they are safe. But Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six, it says to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Come on. Not some, not most, not a little bit, not even 99.9%. But trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will be the one that will direct your path. Amen. Amen. It's a three step process. We got to trust. And we can't lean to our own understanding. And then after that, we've got to submit to God. This Christmas season, I want to encourage you and challenge you to submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you and begin to submit to God. Amen. Some of you today, I feel this in my spirit. You need God to come in and you need God to straighten out some stuff in your life. And the, I'm 35 years old. I'm old enough to run for president. I have nothing to offer you. Every single week, all I do is point you to the book and I point you to Jesus. And I want you to know today that if you draw near, he will draw near to you. And God can come in if you allow him to and he will straighten some stuff out for you. So he wants you to see him and then he also wants you to see direction. And then the next thing he wants you to see is purpose. It's not going to be on the screen, I don't think. Because a lot of people, one of the biggest questions that people ask is, um, what's my purpose in life? What is my purpose in life? And I want you to know that when God created you, God created you on purpose with a purpose and for purpose. Come on. There is a purpose for your life. And it's not to roam around aimlessly, confused, doubting, not sure. But I love Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. This is a great verse. This is another verse I would encourage you to write down. But it says that we are God's workmanship. We are his handiwork. Another translation says that we are his masterpiece. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Come on. How many of you know that God has good things in store for your life? I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what side of the tracks you are from. It doesn't matter your past or your background, but God has good things in store. It doesn't matter if you're 8 or 81 years old, but God still has something for your life. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance. Come on. Somebody say in advance. So God never had a moment where somebody was born and he was like, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with him. I want you to know that you are not a you are not an accident, but God created you on purpose with a purpose and for a purpose. And I want you to know today that if you are in Christ, I'm getting ready to close. That's probably a lie, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to get it all out. I only got a couple more weeks. I'm going to get it all out. But you have a spiritual gift that's on the inside of you. God has gifted you. And I want you to know that you are a 10 in some area. And you might look at me and say, Pastor Stephen, how do you know that? Because I know the one who created you. God created you. And God didn't make junk. And you have a gift. And there is a gift that is on the inside of you. And God wants you to use that gift to advance the kingdom and build the church. You are a 10. Somebody say, I'm a 10. You're a 10. You're a 10. Now, don't get too prideful or conceited, but you are a 10 in some area. You have a gift. And God has created you for good works. So Jesus stepped into the dark night. This is my next slide. Jesus stepped into the dark night. If you're taking notes, I encourage you to write this down. When Jesus first arrived on that very first Christmas, Jesus was there. He was born in the back of a barn he, and, and because there was no room in the inn. And Jesus was there. And the wise men came. The shepherds were there. And the shepherds heard the angel. And Jesus Christ, hear me as I get ready to close. And Mark, you can come on and get ready. 
He came into the darkness. He came into the sinful world so that he can rescue us and save us so that now we can turn from our sins and we can now come into a relationship with Jesus and we can live out and walk out this Christian life. And how many of you know that one day we are going to spend eternity in heaven with him? I want you to know this about Christmas. Christmas isn't about man's attempt to get to God, but Christmas is about God's attempt to reach man. That's my next slide. It's like, I really want you to get this today. Let me repeat it one more time. Christmas isn't about man's attempt to reach God, but it's about God's attempt to reach man. God sent his son, Jesus. He came into the world. That's why we celebrate. He was born and he, in our darkness, he became light. How many of you know that we have all sinned? We have all messed up. The Bible says in Romans, all of us have sinned and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And a lot of people think if I can just put enough time and space between what I did, the guilt and the shame will go away. But I'm here to tell you today that time doesn't heal all wounds, but Jesus Christ heals all wounds. Amen. And today you need some peace. And I just want you to know that you can reach out to Jesus. Actually, Jesus is reaching out to you today. And this peace, it doesn't come from a pill. This peace, it doesn't come from a prescription. This peace, it doesn't come from a bottle. This peace doesn't come from anywhere but God. And the way that you receive peace is by coming into a relationship with Jesus. There's peace that only God can give you. And I close with this, for real. That very, the, the very first thing he said to the world was let there be light. And the light has come. And now the light of Jesus can shine in our hearts. And we can now know the glory of God. The only way we can truly see the light is because Jesus Christ came into our darkness. And on that very first night, it was a holy night. Come on. And that word holy means set apart. And that night was set apart for God, for Jesus to come to fulfill this amazing purpose. Yeah. So let's sing holy night.
Maybe today you need to come into a relationship with Jesus for the very first time, whether if you're sitting in the pew or if you're watching online, I want you to know that God is here. Yes. And the Bible says that the day is the day of salvation. Yes. So if you need Jesus, maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe uh, you need to receive him into your life for the very first time. Now is your time. Yes. Now is your moment. If you would just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Make me right. Make me new with you today. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I pray today that you would just come in and wash me clean. Lord, help me to live for you for the rest of my life as best as I know how. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise today? Hallelujah. Maybe today I close. Maybe you need some peace. Maybe you're going through depression. Maybe you're suffering. Maybe uh, you lost your job this year. There could be all kinds of circumstances that you are facing today. I want to give you an opportunity to come. These altars are open, and if you don't want to come, that's fine. Maybe you just want to slip up your hand, but I just want to pray for you. If, if you're going through something today and you want special prayer, these altars are open, and you can come, and I will pray with you. Um, and if you don't want to come down, that's fine. But if, you, if you're going through something today, whether if you're sitting in the pew or if you're watching online, and you say, Pastor Stephen, please remember me in prayer. Come on, if that's you, just slip up your hand and slip it right back down. Come on. I want you to know that God is here. I want you to know that God is on your side and he is with you and he still has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I encourage you. Those are great life verses. It's a three-step process. We've got to learn. I know it ain't easy, but we've got to learn how to trust in the Lord Amen. with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding, right. but in all of our ways acknowledge him and God will make our crooked path straight. Yes. I love what it says in Isaiah. It says that God goes before us and and he makes our crooked path straight. The Bible says if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. I want you to know today that he is the God of peace. Come on. Right now, if you need peace from God, if you need something from God, would you just slip up your hand? And I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray over you, God. I'm going to pray over you right now. God, I pray that you would touch your people, God. Lord, you know what they're going through. God, you know the battles. You know the struggles. You know the obstacles that they're facing each day each and every single day. And I pray, God, that you would strengthen them. Lord, you said, as our days are, so shall our strength be. And Lord, we know that you are the God of peace, Lord. We know that we can come to you at any time. We know that prayer is a lifestyle. And we know that we can come and pray. And Lord, as we begin to pray about everything, not some things, but about everything, as we begin to pray about everything, we will receive your peace. And that peace will guard our hearts and our minds. And I pray today, as we reach out to you, I pray today as we pray and seek and search for you, God, that you would come and fill us with peace, God. Fill us with hope. Fill us with joy, God. Remind, remind your people today that you love them and that you are on their side. And Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you for those of you who have joined us online. We're getting ready to go off the air. We love you with the love of the Lord. Come back next week as um, it's going to be an awesome time in, in the word and in worship. We will see you next Sunday. We love you with the love of the Lord. Have a great day and God bless you. Merry Christmas from Greenwood First Assembly.
Hallelujah. At this time, before we eat, because 